All right, so it's been a couple of years since I've posted a video, but I'm wanting to get back into it. And I thought I would start off with a couple of tours. Um, the first of which is going to be this Millsbo, which I converted into sort of a living wall kind of terrarium situation. So I probably won't go through every single plant in here. Some of them I don't really know what they are, but I'll do my best to go through everything in here and maybe answer some questions about uh, how I built it and things like that. I think a number of people have built things like this, so it's pretty similar to other ones you might have seen. Uh, but yeah, here is mine. So I think I'll just start at the top here. I Well, first of all, so the background is all moss. Most of it's sphagnum moss. There are some, this is a different kind of moss. I'm not quite sure what it is. There is also some living moss in here. And if I watered it more, I would probably have more living moss, but I haven't been so good about that. Uh, but yeah, starting at the top here, I have a, a cryptanthus. I think this is the absolute zero one. I actually had this in a, a crested gecko enclosure before, but it is kind of sharp. So I decided to put it in here instead. I really love this one. I think it's really unique and it's actually the only cryptanthus I have. So, um, yeah, it seems to be pretty happy in here. Next, I have a curly orchid cactus, which is just kind of stuck into the wall here uh, with some, I have like little metal um, brackets kind of that I could poke into the background, which is um, made of that like insulation foam that people are using to build up backgrounds like this. Um, so yeah, there's those two. And then I do also have some cups that are also built into, like kind of stuck into the background material to hold some of the larger plants. This is an Elophoglossum something. I'll put the name on the screen for ones that I don't remember. Um, but I actually have a couple of Elophoglossum, which I really love. Uh, this one has not grown a new leaf in... A really long time. I do have another one which finally started growing after about a year so I'm hoping that this one will also pick up at some point but they're just so cool. It's it's kind of like a blue oil fern which I do also have. Actually this is a piece of my blue oil fern here so you can see the um, sheen and color is kind of similar between these two but this one is obviously much longer. Um, so yeah there's that one. I have a combination of some different kinds of lachinosa in here. I have the regular lachinosa. I have some of, this might be snow caps, um, the really silver one. And then I also have a variegated holiday cactus. I'm not sure which holiday cactus this is. It might be Thanksgiving, um, but I've had this for a while and it's a very slow grower. I put it up pretty close to the light you can see here. so. I think it's liking that, but uh, yeah, it's just yeah, not doing too much. There are some sections that are all white. I don't know if how much these will grow, but um, just letting it do whatever it wants. Uh, let's see. This is, I think this is a Parasitica black margin. I do have another one of these that's just in a pot, but I wanted to stick some in here. Um, you'll notice that up at the top, especially there's not too much going on. I think the light is so bright that it, it just makes it hard to keep it watered enough. So I've been trying more Hoyas up at the top cause they seem to be more able to handle that. So that's why I stuck this one up here. It is kind of starting to grow over here. You can see there's a growth point here. Um, and I also have some, uh, Croniana cuttings you'll see just kind of all over the place. Um, hoping that they'll sort of take over this part, although it hasn't happened too much. But um, beyond that, I also have, uh, what is this? Oh, Salaginella. It's just this kind of, uh, I don't know, it's called peacock moss sometimes. It isn't usually quite that color, but because the light is so bright up there, it's turning kind of purple. You can see more of it here, which is also purple there. I think is some 
lower down, I'll show you here that this is the same thing, but because it's getting less light, it's more of this blue green color. I actually prefer this, so I might move these ones at some point just because they're, I don't know, they're not really growing that much and they're, I think it's just too bright for it. Um, here I have some melanocrysum, which is kind of all over the place in here. <clears throat> this particular one I think is getting kind of bleached. It's again, pretty close to the light and it's actually growing all the way up to the top now. So I'm going to need to cut it again. Uh, that's kind of the story of this cabinet is that as things grow up, I either have to cut them back or re put them somewhere else. Um, that's also probably going to have to happen soon with this, which I believe is in El Chaco. Yeah, I think so. Um, I have some cuttings of this around here too, but yeah, this one started, I don't know, way down there and is growing up here. So at some point it's going to run out of area to hold on to. So I'll probably cut that one back soon and I don't know, reroute it somewhere down the lower. Um, this is more of that croniana, which is actually starting to kind of attach. So that's nice. Uh, this is an orchid, which was not doing well. Uh, so I tried it in here. It's also still not doing that well, but I figured I might as well just see if it'll grow in here. Um, I'll put the name on the screen for this one too. I'm really not very familiar with a lot of orchids. This is definitely a new one for me and obviously I don't really know what to do with it, but it's just in here in an empty spot for now. This is the other Alophoglossum that I was talking about. So for about a year, it didn't grow at all. Um, I, I still just really love it because of this really amazing color. Um, it has very firm, uh, I don't know if these are called leaves, but, um, uh, but it finally did start growing. So these ones that have this kind of brown, little brown hairs, these are the new leaves. Um, they, I think are going to lose these hairs as they mature. Um, but yeah, you can see there's a couple of them in here. Um, so that was very exciting to see it finally growing. Um, let's see. Oh, back here, if you can even see that I have a ficus villosa, which I had to cut back cause it was growing. It grew all the way up to the top. So I put some cuttings elsewhere, like in another terrarium, but it is starting to grow again. Um, this is a new leaf. I think it even has one really, oops. It's not going to focus on everything. Really tiny one here. Um, you can see when they come in, they're really hairy. Very cute. Um, what else? Let's see. Oh, I have... What is this? I think it's a Hoya Chelsea. Um, just a little cutting that I stuck in here. It's not really growing too much. I don't know. Is it? Actually, it might be. It's kind of going into the moss. I can't really tell. Um, oh, I also have some Margravia. I think that's how you say it around. Um, there's some here. There's some like behind this one. It's just kind of all over the place. Um, let's see. What else? This is more probably Melanocrysum. Yeah, I think this one is Melanocrysum. Um, I have a couple of Forgetii in here. Um, this one, which... I think it's doing pretty well. Um, it's not as large as the other one, but I think it's the leaves are coming in a little bit nicer, um, probably because it's getting less light. Um, this is that blue oil fern I mentioned. Um, it also is a really slow grower for me. So I tried to put some up here to see if maybe more light will help it grow faster. Um, that's, so that's just a separation from this larger one that I've had for quite a long time, actually. Um, then I have a... This is uh, the dark uh, Skindapsis trubia, I think. Um, it goes all the way down here. Um, it's kind of just... It, this actually grew on a moss pole outside of this cabinet, but it was outgrowing the moss pole, and I didn't really know what to do with it. And the leaves were getting smaller, even though it was rooted into the moss pole, so I thought I would try it in here. It's kind of funny how they just look so like narrow and thin, um, which is not how it started out, but yeah, it's doing all right. I think it's starting to put out some new growth. Um, this really tiny begonia here is a begonia bolotifolia. 
I used to have a lot of this and over the last couple of years, um, parts have just died and regrown and this is what I have left. So I'm really hoping that this little tiny leaf won't die because I really like this plant and would like to have um, more like a full pot again if I can get it, get it to grow back from this. Um, but yeah, really cool begonia. You can't really tell because it's so small, but um, the leaves get quite a bit bigger and have a really cool kind of pebble texture to them. Um, let's see what else. Maybe I'll go down this side, see if there's anything else. I think it's more of the same. Um, let's see. So I guess we can go down the other side now. So this is, yeah, more of that peacock moss, which is just kind of all over the place, not really rooting into anything. It's just kind of hanging. Um, I have some ficus pumila, I think. Um, which is just growing into the moss up here. Um, this is actually doing pretty well considering how close it is to the top. So I'm hoping that at some point, I mean, ultimately I would like this whole thing to be green and just have these sort of background plants take over all of the moss. That's been happening pretty slowly so far, but it is happening. Um, so maybe in a while that will, my dream will come true. Um, I have a Wilbur Graves uh, Hoya, which I just stuck a leaf down here. Um, this was the original leaf that I grew, and it looks like it's grown one, two, and oh, three leaves. So it is growing. Um, it's kind of interesting that these leaves are so small because the other plant that I have of it in another cabinet is much larger, but you know, they're still pretty. They're just very tiny. Um, this is probably another El Chaco. I do also have some varicosum in here. I think this is a varicosum little propagation. Um, oh, actually this, wow, I need to pin this or something. This I think is also a varicosum, which was completely behind this leaf. So this is the other forgetty eye, um, which is actually blooming all the way up at the top here and it's it's literally hitting the light so it's, I should probably just cut that but <laughs> I haven't yet um so yeah I have this uh forgetty eye which puts out pretty big leaves but they do get I don't know I think I probably need to water this cabinet a little bit more maybe that would help um although this other forgetty eye is doing okay so I think it might just be the difference in light too because this one's a bit higher up um, behind that, I have, this is just a jewel orchid, uh, which again, similar to that other begonia I was showing you, I have killed and regrown many times. So this is what I have left, um, which it seems to be doing pretty well, actually. Um, I have some Hoya linearis cuttings. This is a, uh, an Anthurium Friedrich Stolli, I think. So you can see the leaves are really long. Um, it's kind of like a vitarifolium, but longer and skinnier, um, which I do actually have a vitarifolium here, which I have really struggled with. It's doing better now that it's in this cabinet, but I think it needs quite a bit of water. And I tend to be an underwaterer, so plants like this are kind of hard for me. So I've had this one for actually longer than I've had this one, but it just has died and come back um, quite a few times, but I think it's looking a little bit more stable now, and I'm hoping that eventually it will actually grow into the Vitara folium that everyone else has, which has these long leaves um, and sort of hangs down like a pendant. Um, but this anthurium is also flowering. I did try to pollinate it. I don't know if I was successful because um, I have an anthurium uh, palidiflorum, um, which I believe they should be able to cross with each other. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I tried to pollinate it with some pollen from that one. Doesn't look super successful. Um, I've actually never been successful pollinating an anthurium, but I just keep trying whenever they kind of line up. So I'm leaving the flower on for now, just in case. Um, so now we're getting down to kind of the bottom section, which I have this... Um, actually, it's just one of the shelves from the Mills bow that I siliconed on here. 
um, to create the bottom. But yeah, down here I have more of the lower light conditions. Um, so things do grow pretty slowly down here. You can see there are some pockets where like really nothing grows because it doesn't really get very much light. Um, this is, man, things are hanging down. Um, this is a Maranta, I think a black Maranta. Um, I have a couple of these around too, which are all from the same plant, just trying to grow them in different conditions. I found, I mean, Maranta are just really difficult for me, um, in general. So I'm just kind of trying different things to see if I can get them to grow well in any conditions. Um, so far this one's doing okay. Um, let's see. This very sad looking plant, which I just, I just watered, so hopefully this will look better. Um, this is a Piper Parmatum, which was a very majestic plant, um, and it was growing really well, but then it kind of just, I don't know what happened, it flowered, and then everything just kind of started to die back. So I took a couple of cuttings and put them around. There's one here, there's one higher up. Um, so I'm hoping that it will come back. This is the only Piper I have, and I don't really have a lot of experience with them, so I don't know if that's a common thing that they flower. Like, the leaves used to be really dark green and firm, um, but now they're obviously just kind of floppy and I don't know. But hopefully it'll come back because I do really like that plant and I think it's really unique and I haven't seen it around for sale too much, so might be a little difficult to replace. Um, let's see. This one growing down at the bottom is a philodendron fricatum, I think. Um, so you can see it has a really kind of a unique oh geez, <laughs> leaf texture, um, sort of corrugated. Uh, maybe I'll show you this one. But yeah, this one I was previously growing in a terrarium with a really high humidity, but it was kind of outgrowing the space. So I'm trying it in here now. It seems to be doing okay. Uh, it hasn't really grown too much since I put it in here, but it's definitely not declining. So I'll take that as a win. And then the last plant I have in here is a Monstera. I think this is a Panati Partita. I think I may have bought it as a sub Panata, but I'm pretty sure that's not what it is. Um, I got it from one of the Equigenera pop-ups in my area. So I don't know if it was mislabeled. Um, or if maybe it will become a sub pinata someday, but, um, to me, it looks much more similar to the Pinati Partita right now. So, uh, yeah, it's also, like I said, down at the bottom, so it doesn't get a ton of light. It, it's kind of, it probably could use a little bit more light. Um, I think it is growing some, but I may, I don't know, take part out and put it on a moss pole or something if I really want it to, um, get more mature, but, for now, it's just kind of a nice cover plant down there um, at the bottom. So, yeah, I think that's... Oh, actually, I forgot about this one. This is the Brantianum, um, which I have a ton of, and it kind of grows too quickly. So I'm actually considering taking it out of here and putting something else there because pretty soon it's just going to grow into nowhere and probably hit the top. So... Um, yeah, I think that's everything that I have in here. Um, let's see, I don't know if I can move back enough to give you a full view of it, but, um, yeah, this is my Mills bow. I've had it like this for about a year and there's been, you know, a lot of changes over time, moving things in, taking things out, propagating, and I think it's coming along pretty well. I just spray it down. I try to do it once a week. It's honestly more like once every two weeks. Um, but yeah, things things are doing pretty well. Um, the humidity definitely does stay up. But I think certain plants in there, especially closer to the top, would probably appreciate some more water. So um, yeah, that would probably help me also get more moss growing in. I do have some. Like I think this is a pillow moss or something like that. And then... I don't know. There's some other kinds of moss that are growing in here. Um, yeah, just like attached to different... Oh, you can't see anything. Attached to different plants. This actually might just be sphagnum moss that's starting to grow, regrow. So that's ultimately the goal would be for all of this dried sphagnum moss to 
start growing. Um, yeah, it's kind of, you know, in different places starting to. You can tell, like, the texture is a little bit different, even though it's not super green right now. But, um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Just wanted to get back into things and started out with a tour of this. I'll do um, probably, yeah, just some more tours to get everything, kind of get everyone re reacquainted with the collection. I've moved, actually, I think I've moved a couple of times since I posted a, my last video a few years ago. Um, so this is definitely a different setup, um, a lot of different plants, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to be jumping back into things. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.